I'm going to talk about our use case for them, why they're cool, and how anybody else writing their own data sources can do the same thing. So Sev1, uh, we've been in the network monitoring space for a long time. It's about 13, 14 years now. Um, our traditional product is a, a racked and stacked uh, physical appliance that connects lots of SNMP, NetFlow, that sort of stuff. Um, but we're deploying some of the largest networks in the world, a lot of carriers, telecos, CSPs, um, financial firms. So uh, we're familiar with collecting large amounts of data. And looking forward, we're, we're close to the release of a new SaaS monitoring product that we built from the ground up, completely new tech. And uh, one, the design principles behind this new product are we want to solve a lot of the pain around some of the largest Prometheus deployments. So we're specifically targeting extremely high frequency data, extremely high cardinality data, and also support streaming as a first class citizen. Um, and as we started to build this out, we realized we needed a good way to visualize the value of having this high frequency data in our early POVs. Um, and we started using Grafana like uh, a year ago to do some of our own self-mon because we didn't have um, that many front end engineers in our organization at the time. And we fell in love with it. We started using it more and more. But we realized there was trouble getting like the wow factor of having live uh, sub-second data when Grafana has like a one or five second timer. Um, so we, we started turning the timer high, lower and lower in Grafana and trying to render the data faster and faster. And um, it's not a great UX. And we also started to have other problems where um, if you have like data at 100 millisecond frequency, um, you, you start getting like 30,000 points over the wire, like every, 30, every one second, two second. And um, it's not great because we have to pay to pull that out of our back end. We have to pay for the, the egress of that. The user has to bring that over their network. So um, it's really in everyone's best interest if we can stream. So we started to ask ourselves, um, how difficult could it be for Grafana to live stream this data for us? Can we do it in our data source? Would we have to fork Grafana? Would they be interested in taking this upstream? So we started to dig in. We looked around. And it turns out it was actually really easy. Um, but there is an asterisk next to that because the, this isn't something that's well documented in Grafana. And I'm not sure if it's even really officially supported. But the, the data structure that you normally send as a data source you can wrap that in an RxJS observable object. And this exists in the Grafana code base from a time when the team uh, did some experiments around WebSockets and decided to leave this feature in here. So what you can do is you can put your data in the observable object, and you can hook that object up to um, an a long-lived HTTP request. Um, and you can use like the Fetch API or like a modern uh, HTTP library like Axios or something to do that and feed that data into the observable object. And what you get out of that is you, as the data source, can implement live streaming without having to make any core changes to Grafana. So I'll show you what that looks like. Sorry, the network kind of cuts out sometimes, and I have to refresh this. So on the left, you see we'll, we're looking at the same data in these two columns with the, the, the two panels on the left. Um, are the five second default refresh in Grafana, and the ones on the right are the live data. And you can imagine if we have a whole dashboard full of these requests at, at sub second, like 100 millisecond data, which this is, um, it, then it's, it's so much data to transfer over the wire, and we don't have to resort to you know, buffering the data like uh, people talked about in other presentations or um, stuff like that. So it's been a great experience for us as we're trying to build this product that can handle you know, millions of data points per seconds, and we need super granular insight into how our message queue is performing and how uh, ingestion pods and stuff are, are scaling up and down. It's, it's been a, a godsend for us um, to use this. And I, I've heard a lot of interesting use cases in the conference um, over these last two days of, I think, other people that could really benefit from having this live data, like uh, some of the people that do IoT and have big periods of no data, but then lots of super granular dense data, or, or some of the emergency services people who, like lives, literally depend on seeing this data as fast as possible. So um, I would love if more people experiment with this. I would love to uh, work in the Grafana code base to make this more of a first class citizen, um, because there are some hiccups, as you can imagine. Um, so. The, gra the panels never finish loading because the data is always coming in. So a lot of the graph interactions don't work. So like zooming and things um, don't work. Uh, it's really easy to destroy the browser. Like once you're using sub-second data, it's just like a cannon pointed at your foot. Um, 
is because like in, in one of our examples, we had 10 metrics at one second. If you're repainting every time they come in, you might be repainting like every hundred milliseconds. So you really you, you need a way to 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 thread to the throttle your writes into that observable object. And there's probably better ways to do that, which I, I haven't explored fully yet. Um, and it's also hard in Grafana to like control the life cycle of the open streams because, like I said, the, the panel like never finishes rendering. So it, it's hard to know like when people make when you make an edit and change the query like we to kill the existing stream and start a new one. So I like also haven't figured out the best way to handle all that. But uh, the it demos well and it's really exciting and the the people we show it to and our POVs love it. So that's something we're going to keep investing in. Um, and yet, like when you have live data and non-live data together, like the UX of how the window slides and how the other ones refresh, there's there's some complexity around that. But I haven't uh, the the data our actual Sev1 data source isn't ready to be uh, opened yet. So I tried to like pull the most important bits out of that and dump them quickly this morning in like uh, a minimally viable streaming demo and. Um, this code is like almost pseudocode at this point, but I just wanted to have something that people could look at if they were eager to to start experimenting with it. But uh, I'll flush this repo out some more with um, some better use cases and some of the fixes and stuff that I've learned in my time of doing it. So that's it.